In this clip, we're going to have a look at quadratic functions. These are functions fx equals ax squared plus bx plus c, such that a is unequal to zero. For example, the most trivial case is, of course, the fx equals x squared. So if we write down the x-axis and the y-axis, then as a graph, we see a parabola like this, with the top on zero, so this is a parabola opening upward, and the axis of symmetry, there's an axis of symmetry because it's an even function, and the axis of symmetry is given by the line x equal to zero. The second example, let's have a look at fx equals minus x squared. So actually what we do in the former example, we just put a minus sign for any value y that we achieve, that we get. So now we get a parabola opening downward, yeah, in the following fashion. So again, we have an axis of symmetry at x is 0, but now we have a parabola opening downwards. And this is due to the fact that we have actually a constant a equals minus 1, which is smaller than 0. Now consider another example, fx equals x squared minus 4, where well, actually it's a, just a translation of the graph of the function we had as the first example, but there's also another way to look at it. We can factorize this term in x plus 2 times x minus 2. If we do so, we see that actually the graph of f crosses the x-axis two times. One times at the value x minus 2, because x is minus 2, this term cancels, and for 2, the other one cancels. And again, we have a minimum value of minus 4 over here, which gives us the top. So again, since this is a positive a, we have a parabola opening upward. Another example, fx equals x squared plus 2x plus 3. Well, there's almost a quadratic term in the beginning, so let's make it a quadratic term, like this. And then we get this quadratic term plus 2. And this makes it it's very convenient to create a graph from this expression, because now we see that the axis of symmetry is at the value of x for which this term cancels, that's minus 1. And we see also the value of the top, which is 2. So at minus 1, the minimum value of the function equals 2. So we get a parabola opening upward, and it crosses the y-axis in the point 0, 3. Something similar can be done in the following example. So look at fx equals minus x squared, minus x squared plus 2x. plus 2x plus 1, while well, there's almost a quadratic term over there, uh, which is found like this. So here we have x squared minus 2x plus 1. This is actually a squared term with a minus sign. And we have to correct for the 2 over here. Then we get minus x minus 1 squared plus 2. So a graph of this function is easily found. Yeah, just take the y-axis and the x-axis. And we know that the axis of symmetry is just at the x value for which this term cancels, which is as 1. And we also know the top of the function, which is at value 2. And we also know, since now we have a negative sign before the x squared, well, that we have a parabola down, opening downward. Since the top is above the x-axis, we know that there should be an inter two intersection points of intersection with the x-axis. And these values can be calculated as follows. Just equate fx to 0, then we get, using this alternative expression for f, 
that minus x minus 1 squared plus 2 should be equal to 0. Or, equivalently, equivalently x minus 1 squared should be equal to 2. Taking square roots on both sides, we see that x minus 1 should be plus the square root of 2, or x minus 1 should be equal to minus the square root of 2. So indeed, we get two solutions. Well, we found two solutions on the basis of visual inspection. So the right x value equals 1 plus square root of 2, and the, ne and, and the smaller one is 1 minus the square root of 2. Consider now general polynomials of degree 2. fx is a x squared plus bx plus c with a unequal to 0. Now look at the following expression where a times the square term, so x plus b divided by 2a squared plus c minus b squared divided by 4a, can be rewritten by removing the square, work out this product, so that we get a times x squared plus 2 times b divided by 2a times x plus b squared divided by 4a squared, plus the constant c minus b squared plus, uh, divided by 4a, then if we work this out, then we get a times x squared plus a times this term, which is no more than b times x, plus a times this term, which equals b squared divided by 4a, plus the constant c minus b squared divided by 4a. So we have minus b squared divided by 4a cancels against b squared divided by 4a. So we obtain actually fx, ax squared plus bx plus c. So our con conclusion here is that fx can be written as a a times a squared term plus a constant. Well, this is very convenient because in the former examples we saw that actually we can derive from this description the axis of symmetry of the graph of the function fx. And we also know where the top is of, of this parabola. So suppose we have a positively oriented parabola, so this one moves up with a larger than zero, then we have an axis of symmetry at minus b divided by 2a. And the top is where this square term equals zero, and the top is is at c minus b squared divided by 4a, the y value. And in this case, if you look at the graph, then we see that c minus b squared divided by 4a is smaller than zero, because the top is below the x-axis. So the other case is where actually the top is at at the x-axis, in case of which we have c minus b squared divided by 4a equals 0. And finally, the example, the only class of instances that is left is the case where the top is above the x-axis. So again, we have the axis of symmetry minus b divided by 2a, but now the top is above the x-axis, in case of which we have c minus b squared divided by 4a larger than 0. So, usually we define a special term, the discriminant of the quadratic function equals b squared minus 4ac, but it relates to this term here, right? So it's minus 4a times d. And in this case, we have d equal to 0, and here we have d smaller than 0. So in the first example, we see we have two intersections with the x-axis. So we find solutions, we find zeros of the equations fx equals equals d divided by 4a. So dividing on the left and right hand side by a, a is unequal to 0, we get x plus b divided by 2a squared equals d divided by 4a squared. If we assume that d is larger than 0, then we can take 
square roots on both sides again, and then we get x plus b divided by 2a is plus or minus square root of d divided by 2a. So now we derive the formula, the more useful formula, that actually the roots in this case are found by minus b plus or minus the square root of d divided by 2a. Okay, what happens if d happens to be 0? Well, then actually this term here cancels and we get the x value of minus b divided by 2a as the point of intersection of the graph of the function with the x-axis. And in case the d is smaller than 0, then we see that we have no solution 